Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Friday, August 26. So welcome to Friday and welcome to the weekend. <laughs> Hope that you've got something fun planned for yourself and perhaps you're going to spend time with your family, your friends, grandchildren. Um, tell us what you're up to. You know, this, these mornings with 60 and me are your time as well. They are time for you to share with each other. Just introduce yourself in the comments below and uh, let us just get a little closer together as a community. I have got my cup of tea this morning. I've got um, a really interesting tea. It's called hibiscus and cranberry. And I, I was in the shop yesterday and I bought some new tea because I was running out of creative ideas and I came across um, these yogi selection and do you remember Maharishi Mahesh Yogi he was the guru of the Beatles I mean you know thousands of years ago and um, I just wondered is he still alive and I did a little quick check and he actually did die in 2008 but I don't remember hearing of his passing and I remember though that he made really good teas and um, just of course he was an excellent meditation teacher for many people did anyone in our group practice uh, transcendental meditation I did. I did when I was in college and uh, yeah, that, he had quite an impact. So anyway, I'm drinking some of his tea, cranberry and hibiscus. So have a, grab a cup of tea. Let's sit down and talk about what's going on in the world. And I'll share a couple of stories that might be of interest to you as well today. So in Italy, there's a state of emergency been declared in central Italy. Uh, the rescue efforts are continuing and now it's more of a recovery because it's been over 40 hours since the earthquake hit and uh, they're trying really hard to find as many people as possible. But it's really, really sad. I was watching an interview this morning. A man was saying that um, this weekend they were going to have a, a, a scheduled, you know, like sort of town uh, picnic. And that a lot of people had come to the, um, this is an Amarici, had uh, come to the town to join in. And it's just so sad that a lot of them were killed and along with, you know, the people they came to visit. Oh, it's just, it's such a very, very sad situation. But of course, uh, they're having like literally hundreds of aftershocks there and people are so frightened. They're sleeping in their cars and um, even though they've set up some tents for people, everyone's just, you know, very, very upset. So our hearts go out to Italy. It's a tough time. So let's give them all of our 60 and Me love. Now, um, another fun story I read was that they have, well, scientists have, in quotes, discovered uh, a planet that might be like Earth in the sense it might be able to um, su support life. And this is a planet that's actually circling one of the closest stars to our sun. It's called um, Proxima b. That's the name of this little planet, and it's actually circling around Proxima Centauri, which is the sun, um, a star is closest to, this, to our sun. And apparently they've, it's in a zone, it's outside of our solar system, but it's in a zone that they consider conducive to, um, uh, you know, to possible life. And uh, so I was all getting all excited about this, and I thought this would be so fun to just even explore robotically. And it said that it's really exciting because it's only four and a half light years away. I thought, oh, that's nothing, you know, just maybe four and a half years, you'd, you'd have to sit in a spaceship, that's not a problem. <laughs> but it turns out that a light year is about 37,000 years. So I think we're going to have to work on the technology in order to get even robotic um, exploration of Proxima B. But you never know, it's something for the future, isn't it? It's fascinating to think about. Okay, in Brazil, the um, trial begins, actually it began yesterday, of the current president Dilma Rousseff. She is the uh, leader of the Workers' Party, it's a left-wing party, and all through the Olympics, all through uh, the last few months, <clears throat> her trial has been pending and it started yesterday. They're trying to impeach her for what uh, was believed to be um, malpractice around uh, budgeting of money. And she claims that this is really just an attempt to get rid of her party, which has been in power for 18 years, and they just wanna get rid of her. And um, in a way, it's a coup, in her opinion. So there is someone from the other opposition party poised to take over if she's impeached, but you know she's gonna to struggle to to win her case. Uh, all the indications are she's going to be impeached and a new government will come in Brazil. But you never know. This is the story as it is today. So we'll see. And in a neighboring country, Colombia, um, they're celebrating in Bogota where, because there's been a, a, well, it's not even a ceasefire. It's actually an agreement as to settle uh, an 18 year war. I think it might even be longer than that between the FARC rebels and the government. Now the FARC rebels have been 
just active for so many years trying to speak out against what they perceive as injustice in in Brazil, in Colombia. But they, I mean, there were some pretty horrific things that happened over the last years, um, you know, murders, uh, kidnapping, and the FARC rebels were just a really difficult um, challenge for the government. But they finally decided to make peace. And um, it cost, by the way, it cost 220,000 lives, this war that's gone on, actually since 1964. So a lot longer than 18 years. But anyway, they've now decided they're going to make peace and they're going to basically give up their, the FARC uh, rebels will give up their arms and you know integrate themselves back into Colombian society. So we'll see how that works out, but it's good news for the average person again in, in Colombia who's had to deal with this over the years. So that's in Colombia. Now, um, I have a funny story here. I, w I was really hesitant to, as to whether even to share it with you because it doesn't sound real to me. I think someone might have made this up. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, it's kind of fun. It, it's claimed that in 1955, there was a magazine called Housekeeping Monthly. Now, I've also read this as being good housekeeping, but I think it's a different magazine. Wrote about uh, the role of a woman in a marriage and as, as a mom and a, and a wife. And these are the rules that she was meant to live by. And it's, and actually they're really funny, but I've read reports that have said this is absolutely true. I've seen pictures from the magazine, but then other people say it's a bit of a hoax. But I think there's no doubt though, that women in the 1950s had a very different um, self image and role and feeling of their role. I certainly know my mom, my personal situation, my mom was very much a traditional mother and, and wife. And um, we've had obviously a lot of change, but see what you think about these, these um, recommendations about how a woman should behave. First of all, in terms of your husband, this is being a wife, have dinner ready. Plan ahead even the night before to make sure you have a delicious meal ready for him when he returns from work. Prepare yourself, touch up your makeup, put a ribbon in your hair and look fresh. Three, be a little gay and interesting for him. I think gay had a different meaning then, but be gay and interesting for him. His boring day may need a lift and it's one of your duties to help him. Duties. Clear away the clutter. Five, catering for his comfort will provide you with an immense sense of personal satisfaction. I'm just reading these, honestly, I'm smiling as I read them. Minimize all noise in the house when he returns from work. Be happy to see him. Um, free him, free him with a warm smile and show sincerity in your desire to please him. Listen to him. The next one is let him talk first. Remember, his topics are more important than yours. And then the next one is don't greet him with complaints and problems. Don't complain if he's home late for dinner or even if he stays out all night. And lastly, it says a good wife knows her place. So whatever place that was, I don't think we're there anymore. <laughs> but I think even if it's true or false, this, this article, I think what it says is that we've come a long way. And, but it's interesting as I often read our articles in 60 and Me, I see that there is this, um, uh, you know, attachment to these kinds of expectations that we are still rebelling against it and maybe, maybe in some ways gone a little over the, you know, the other direction. But um, I think most women in their 60s have found um, a, a, another solution, another direction for their relationships with husbands and, and partners. Anyway, so finally, I've got a fun art over here for you that I wanted to, to share because it's the weekend and you're all going to go shopping, right? Well, that's just a joke because I'm, I'm not, I don't know about you, but a lot of women are going shopping and some love to shop for shoes. I, I've never really understood this because I, I've always had like three pair of black shoes. That's been my, <laughs> my life. But people do love shoes. My friend Maureen has hundreds of shoes. But anyway, here, here we are with um, the seven pairs of shoes that we think at 60 and me, every woman over 60 should have. Okay, so the first pair of shoes are running shoes. Running shoes to chase your dreams and keep fit. Number two, reliable flats. This is to highlight and reinforce the importance of simplicity. Next, third is comfortable walking shoes. This is for you to stay social, get out there, walk around the park with your friends and their dogs and just to, to be comfortable in, in, in nature. Number four is sturdy boots to stay adventurous and uh, bold. 
And then we've got sexy high heels. And these are to make you feel sensual and beautiful and lovable and special. So have a pair of high heels and, and not, not just normal high heels, but, but nice, you know, maybe three inch high heels. The next is welly boots. Have a pair of welly boots for the rain, for the mud. Go out to the festivals, have fun, splash around and get, get be silly. And if possible, find a pair of wellies that have got like ducks or polka dots or something frivolous and silly. So welly boots is the next one, number six. And then finally, have a pair of sensible heels. These are the sensible high heels that you can wear to an interview or you can wear to, um, you know, to go out for dinner and just to feel uh, special and in control, to be confident in your sensible shoes. So those are the seven pairs of shoes that uh, 60 and me and, and me would like to recommend you have in your closet and they don't have to all be black. So that's a uh, little a tip for the weekend, and let us know what you what what shoes you bought. If you go out and buy a pair of shoes, <laughs> It'd be great to share. So um, I hope you have a lovely Friday, everybody. Um, my reminder to you is to basically, if you want to join, get the news first, to go up to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and uh, sign up there to receive the news first. And um, I, the final thing is, I've I've been and over the last week. Uh, sharing with you quotes that people have sent in uh, to me as a result of a, an article we, we had. And I love this one that came in from a lady called, her name was Delos. I've never known anybody with that name, Delos. So if you're, if you're listening, give us the history of that. It's an interesting name. But Delos, and she gave a brilliant quote by Dorothy Parker, who I do love as, a, as an author. And she said, the cure for boredom is curiosity. And there is no cure for curiosity. And I, I love that. Let's go out this weekend and be curious. Just take a look around you. Explore things that you may pass every day. Just take a minute and stop and think and look at that thing and be curious about it. Ask questions. Um, you know, just get involved with, with life at a different level this weekend and tell us about it. Write something in the comments section below. So that is actually my question for the day. And that is, what have you got planned for the weekend? What adventures are you off on? And just leave your comments in the section below and talk to each other. Uh, share what you're, what you're going to be doing this weekend and we'll start a conversation. So my question for you is, what have you got planned for the weekend? Thanks everybody for being here. Have a fabulous Friday and I'll see you all again tomorrow here on Mornings with 60 and Me. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye everyone.